Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're at. Welcome to Collider Dailies. I'm John Algitz and I'm joined by Maggie Lovett. Perfect timing on the getting done with your drink right as uh, I called for you to say your it's name. almost as if I had that planned for dramatic but do you know effect. What, do you know what wasn't perfect timing though? Uh, us logging onto the show today. <laughs> We are we are a couple minutes late, which is our bad. We were talking about uh, something that we're going to be doing on another episode, and we got like really into the discussion about it, and suddenly we're just like, oh crap, we're a couple minutes late. We should probably actually start the episode. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, happy Rex Manning Day to all who celebrate, says the two money. Uh, <laughs> happy happy sure. Heroes Day, right? We're all getting superpowers today. There's going to be an eclipse. So the eclipse is actually the reason why there's no voice of God today uh, and why I'm running the show. Because this is he's, true. <laughs> he's in the he's in the actual path of the eclipse. So the eclipse he's, like, hey. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go look at it like with some buddies. Can you run the show? And it's like, heck, yeah, I, I got you. Go check that out. Uh, so, yes, I will blame the eclipse if things get off the rails uh, like they already have. <laughs> but today we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff. We have two trailers that we're going to give our thoughts on. Uh, Fly Me to the Moon and Maxine. Uh, of those two, there's definitely one that I'm more excited about than the other. Uh, and uh, But before that, we're going to be talking about the box office. So we had a bit of a... Uh, let me get the topic up here. Whoop and uh, hide those things. All right. Uh, <laughs> running the show while hosting the show is uh, more difficult than you might expect. So this weekend, we had uh, two movies debut that actually affected the box office a little bit. We had Monkey Man and The First Omen. Uh, Monkey Man pulled in 10.1 million domestically, and The First o Omen pulled in 8.4 million, uh, both of which were doing pretty good, but neither of which could do much to... Uh, unseat Godzilla X Kong, which still topped the domestic box office at 31.7 million. Uh, sitting up there, still pulling strong, but not pulling in the top five for the week is still Dune Part 2. But Dune Part 2 is notable in that it is still doing gangbuster numbers at IMAX. So when we're talking about Dune Part 2 sort of sitting at the top of the box office, it's purely just IMAX numbers really at this point. Uh, but as far as the rest of the domestic box office, uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire pulled in 9 million and Kung Fu Panda 4 pulled in 7.9 million. Maggie, what are you thinking about the, the way that things are looking with the box office this last weekend? Are there any surprises? I would say there are no surprises. I am thankful that I've been proven right that Godzilla's name recognition was going to keep it at number one for a while. Um, you know, I think it's, it's great when there are movies with this kind of name recognition that brings people out. Um, you know, I think even though it seems like people are on the fence about how they feel about this Godzilla movie, it still seems like it's proven to be a really fun experience. I've seen people say they're going back to see it a second time uh, just to like enjoy it because people seem to really love monster movies. Uh, and I think that is Probably a good sign. I'm sure we're going to see more Godzilla versus King Kong movies in the future. Does, doesn't seem like a franchise that's going to die anytime soon. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, I was also excited to see that uh, Oppenheimer managed to uh, find a new milestone this weekend um, yes. in the overseas markets, um, making it... Uh, Christopher Nolan's most successful film overseas so far. Uh, so I was quite happy to see that. Always kind of fun to see films kind of inch towards new milestones, even after they're well and truly out of the, uh, you know, award circuit and major conversations. There was also another major milestone for The Boy and the Heron uh, that debuted overseas and it continues to perform really well. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with where things are, you know, um, Kung Fu Panda is hitting on digital tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see how it fares uh, heading into the weekend now that families can just rent it and buy it and, you know, entertain yeah. the children at home with it. Uh, but we've seen in the past that that sometimes doesn't affect children's movies at all. So we'll see. I mean, that's usually true. But when it comes to, I mean, Kung Fu Panda 4 has, it's been in the market for a while now. It's It's been out there. So it's definitely kind of coming, I feel, to the end of its leg as far as, being in the top five. And I definitely think that coming out on digital is going to 
you know, just further drive that down. Uh, what do you think about the performances of our two debuts for this weekend, Monkey Man and the First Omen? Uh, do you think that they are performing about where you expected them to be, or did you expect them to pull in less, more? I think in terms of Monkey Man, it's pretty much dead on what I was expecting for it, maybe a little bit better. Um, I'm always going to root for independent films, you know, these non IP films, original, um, you know, creation, uh, stories to do well. And I love Dev Patel and I'm thrilled that his, you know, first outing as a, you know, director and, and, you know, storyteller and star of his own, um, you know, film is, is doing so well. Um, so I'm very excited about that and I hope people continue to go out to see that so that we have, uh, more of these uh, films made in the future. Yeah. I will say that uh, this weekend, you know, talking to talking to friends and family and stuff who are going to see movies this weekend, the only ones that seem to really be getting any buzz that people that I know watched were those who saw Monkey Man. Everyone who, everyone who went and saw that were very happy with what they watched. Uh, you know, a lot of people were saying that they wanted to see more, that they were excited by what they saw. Uh, so, you know, I'm excited to go see it. I still definitely have to go see it. Um, I plan on seeing that probably within the next couple of days. And then the first Omen, I'm not as excited to see. I do yeah. like the Omen. I think it's really interesting that it seems like this film is one that you either love or you hate. And I also kind of love the fact that we're getting another situation of like what they call twin movies. You have two... Uh, religiously themed horror movies about nuns that give birth to the Antichrist <laughs> that have debuted within the same month, which I think is funny. I love the twin phenomena in films. I remember it so clearly the first time I experienced one of those, which was A Bug's Life and Ants coming out within months of each other. And that is like always stuck with me. So I love that we have two horror movies that have similar themes, but are different in their like design. Yeah. that seem to be doing well with audience and this, and you know april is a month for horror so it's it's kind of fun to see that we should do an episode sometime talking about the the twin movies i would love to there's so many the so first many. one that i remember consciously thinking about was dante's peak and volcano mm. Like, which, I mean, when you actually watch the movies, they really don't have anything in common other than the fact that they're both about erupting volcanoes. But outside, I mean, Volcano is about a volcano in Los Angeles. And the other one is Pierce Brosnan running away from a volcano in a place where you would expect there to be a volcano. Uh, yeah, I remember so, uh, the Friends with Benefits and the other one. It's like Mila Kunis is in one and Ashton Kutcher. No strings me. attached. No strings attached. Yes, I always yeah. think of those two. And then there's there's some a couple other ones. Uh, White ones. House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Yep, that's the I other one that I was thinking of. Mind. Yeah, uh, it's fun. And then there was what like a year and a half ago, maybe longer, maybe two years ago, Disney put out two Man and Dog versus the Wild. One was starring Harrison Ford and one was starring Willem Dafoe. Oh, and they were yeah. both man and dog. And it was like, it came out within like three months of each other. I think it's, yeah, it's such the a The only combo. reason why I remember any of those is I remember seeing the behind the scenes still of Harrison Ford petting a dude in a mocap suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Deep impact in Armageddon, Steve points out. Mm -hmm. uh, although, Steve, I'm going to disagree with you. I like Dante's Peak far more than I like Volcano. Uh, Controversial. <laughs> All in the Game had a good point about this last box office weekend uh, when he said that the box office had to contend with both WrestleMania and college basketball. Women's That's final true. drew in a record 15 million viewers. Very much the case. Because as much as I you know, had people saying that they were excited to go to the movies this weekend. I knew more people who were excited to be watching both of those events. So that definitely did cut into things a little bit, but probably not necessarily any more than we really expected them to. Uh, so, yeah, that was your, your box office recap. Just looking at that really, really quick and easy. Let's go into our first trailer that we watched. Fly me to the moon. Maggie. Yes. Give me your thoughts on this. How did you feel after watching that trailer? I think with the NASA connection, they were brilliant to debut it today with the eclipse and everyone like talking to astronauts. Um, yeah. I think it looks fun. 
Um, you know, I do like Channing Tatum. I do like Scarlett Johansson. So I think it's a great cast. Um, style wise, it looks really pretty. I was kind of struck by the uh, production design for it. I honestly didn't really know what to expect with this one. Um, so it looks fun. It looks interesting. Yeah, this is the one that I, so I didn't, I hadn't even heard that this movie was coming out when the trailer dropped. I was just kind of surprised and I was like, oh, okay, well, let's watch this and see how it is. It definitely looks like a good date night movie. Which yeah. You don't, you don't get very many NASA date night movies. Yeah. I mean, as somebody who loves NASA, who has two NASA t-shirts, I am hyped. <laughs> and I hope that they have like a really good press box for it. <laughs> if they would like to send me one, I'm a girl who loves space. <laughs> and I do, I do really like the pairing of Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum. That is a me pairing too. that I actually, what? I said me too. Oh, okay. Uh, that is a pairing that I actually, I hadn't thought of, but seeing them interacting, I feel like they have decent chemistry. Obviously I have to watch the full film to be able to say if they do or not. Um, but it feels like they have decent chemistry, at least in the trailer. So I am excited to see them interacting and see how they play off of each other. Um, and again, the setting is just ripe for funny moments and, you know, just potentially some pretty great drama. I'm, I'm, I'm my one problem with the trailer and maybe it's a problem. Maybe it's a good thing is I had a hard time really understanding the way that they were going to go with it. Yeah. It looks like it could be comedic, but again, the setting makes me think like, there could be some there could be some drama, some stakes to this, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think it looks like a lot of fun. I don't have the most thoughts on this. Yeah, one. I was gonna say like I I feel like with this being the first trailer, I don't necessarily have a lot of like preconceived notions for it. I feel like this was a trailer. I remember when they were both cast in the film, and then last week they updated the release date and i was like oh wow that's much sooner than i expected because it had been months since we heard anything about this movie uh and i was quite surprised that the trailer dropped today i mean again like i said genius marketing to drop it on a day when people are already going to be talking about astronauts and nasa uh but i was really surprised that we got like images dropped we got the the, the trailer dropped i was like oh wow this the, i guess they're moving on and starting to market for this one big um you know i expected maybe something out of CinemaCon. Uh, since that's starting today over in Las Vegas. But yeah, I was not fully prepared to formulate thoughts on this one first thing this morning. <laughs> no, yeah, this one, as I said, this one definitely caught me off guard, but I'm not mad that it caught me off guard. Uh, I am excited to watch it. Is I think it's going to be one of those ones that I'm not necessarily going to be rushing to see in theaters, but I will eventually see it. Uh, it hits theaters, by the way, in July. So go ahead and check out the trailer. If that sounds like something that you might be interested in, a sort of like romance comedy surrounding NASA. At least that's what it seems to be. Uh, yeah, go check that out. Our next trailer and the one that I kind of expected to have bigger thoughts and ideas and feelings on would be Maxine. Uh, our third Ty West, my, Mia Goth sort of horror part of this trilogy involving Hollywood and stardom and all that. Uh, of course, following up from Pearl and X. Uh, this looked exactly as I wanted it to look. It was stylish, intense. And once again, Mia Goth looks like she's just having the best time while playing this character. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, so controversially, I have not seen any of Ty West's movies. I know them, like I've discussed before, horror. I am very, very specific about my horror tastes. And that kind of laid yeah. just outside of my my bounds. What are your horror tastes? Your horror tastes? I'm curious about this. So I prefer psychological horror. Okay. And while I am not against slasher films, I don't like to open myself up to the risk of next stuff, as I call it. Um, I just don't like things happening to people's necks. Um, and like even The Last of Us, the, there was like, I think it was episode two that had next stuff where like the... I can't remember what they're called right now. The their version of zombies, like the stuff coming from the neck, the cordyceps, like that yeah. just 
wigged me out in a way that I never fully finished watching The Last of Us either. I watched like select scenes and filled the rest of it in with recaps because I was just like, oh, I can't run the risk of next stuff. So <laughs> next stuff is kind of where I draw the line. And I wasn't sure with Pearl and those films if there was next stuff. Anytime I see somebody swinging an axe, I, I recognize that there is there is the potential for next stuff. Uh, so I don't know. I like to say that my horror tastes are kind of broad because there's definitely movies that exist within like my selection of favorite horror films. Don't ask me them because right now, if you ask me a horror film that I like, I will forget every single no. horror film I've ever That's seen. Your favorite horror film. Hit me. Come on. Um, uh, one You're of on my the favorite, spot. Let's go. <laughs> one of my favorite. Okay. So Fresh is one of my favorite horror films. Uh, and that I'm fine. Like that has like thigh stuff <laughs> and that's fine. Um, <laughs> Shoulders <laughs> down. That's what yeah, Maggie that's wants. fine. That's free game. Um, the horror movie with Josh Rubin uh, was really great. I love that one. That was also psychological horror because it's like, it's like a date gone wrong. Um, like those kind of films. There's a really great one that I watched at fantastic fest i guess um the crumb catcher i really loved that one that was again another like date gone wrong kind of vibe to it um that kind of stuff i really like not so much the next stuff can't do the next stuff <laughs> so, you're, so you're against vampires so yes actually <laughs> despite the fact that i have consumed a large quantity of vampire material throughout the course of my life including being named after one of the like first like female characters that was like i don't i don't know their relationship was weird but like had a vampire after her um, <laughs> in dark shadows i don't really like vampires uh, because uh, there is a pretty high risk for next stuff. Knowing what I know about you as a person, I'm trying to dance around what it is that I want I to say. I prefer werewolves if we're going to go for supernatural mm -hmm. beings, uh, swamp thing, it, like monsters, but not if they're going to bite me. And werewolves will bite you, but not in your neck, most likely. Like you're I running I don't know. Risk you. Of like you do arms. realize that animals go for the neck for a reason, right? And like yeah, but like is likely to go for the neck. No, because that they tend to go for easier to grab uh, limbs that are actually next to teeth. Like wolves specifically, like they're not going to get themselves in a position where they could have their own vulnerable neck bit. They'll go for other parts, like biting hunches and like things like that. So. <laughs> That is an <laughs> I'm never not going to hear Maggie's voice in my head saying next stuff when I witness <laughs> anything related to next stuff in film, <laughs> TV, or video games. I'm so sorry for ruining next stuff for you. Um, yeah. Getting back on subject here <laughs> about Maxine. Uh, Steve points out X only made close to 15 million worldwide and Pearl made lower close to 10 million worldwide. Well, more people go to see Maxine. I think Halsey is a big draw. Yeah, Halsey is going to be a super big draw. Honestly, this cast is really stacked just across the board. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, quite a few of these people do you know do cause there to be a bit more of a draw plus just the fact that this series in general has had a ton of word of mouth uh even just since pearl like there's been a ton of word of mouth growth about it um but that being said this is this has always been a series that has kind of been much more of a like almost like horror it's like, like horror. it's a it's a horror fan series it's a series for horror fans more yeah than anything. it's not it's, really a mainstream series I um, and i I think that A24 knows that. Yeah, I, I do. I feel like this is very much like an A24 small, but small budget, small like reception. And I think they're fine with that. I do think that there's the potential for this one to be much bigger than the previous two. Uh, but I still wouldn't be too surprised if it was somewhere closer to like the 20 million mark. Um, and it also well, depends on, you know, what might crowd it out those weekends. Well, and just also just on top of that is the fact that like horror is not really the biggest box office driver. And at least when it comes to like the no. scene of horror. horror almost always does better once it's available to watch at home. 
Yes, 100%. Because people are far more interested in being scared where they feel safe than yep. being scared in public. Which um, I'm going to address one of the comments in the chat, which, oh, that's not the one. This is the one. <laughs> it moved too quickly. Yes. Stuff in monkey as man. soon as somebody told me that, like, one of my friends who saw an early screening of it was like, hey, Maggie, there's next stuff in Monkey Man. I was like, cool. I'm not going to my screening for that. I will wait till I can watch it at the safety of my home so i can skip through the next stuff because <sighs> as sam red points out here uh oop. Oop. uh i don't know if any of the new cast is the same poll as jenna ortega that is true but you got to remember that when she was in x she wasn't as big of a star at the yep. time like she wasn't she was like her a star was rising but it had not yeah, she, yet. it was rising and it was the kind of thing where like if you were in the know you knew who she was but otherwise you know, mainstream audiences didn't know who she was at the time because she hadn't done Wednesday. She hadn't done, I don't even think she had, uh, had she had done Scream yet? She, she might have done, filmed she it. might have done her first Scream. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. Perry would be the one who would know. Uh, and yes, all in the game, horror can be a big profit generator. But the reason why horror could be such a big profit generator is because of the fact that horror, unlike a lot of other genres, is almost purpose built to be a low budget machine uh horror has never really been like a big blockbuster budget kind of thing a lot of horrors are produced on next to no money and so if they make any money at the box office that always winds up being big profits uh so yeah Indeed. that's really the way that it, that's the way that works and with that we're going to wrap up today's show uh maggie you got anything coming down the pipeline that you want to plug do i have anything coming down the pipeline i do have some fun interviews that will be uh hitting the site in the coming days uh and then i have my rebel moon interviews which i did last week which those are embargoed until like two weeks from now so it's going to be a while I haven't say, even seen them. they haven't even sent them to me yet so i don't even know uh but i can confirm that Zack snyder is awesome <laughs> <laughs> i so so enjoyed getting to talk with Zack Snyder. I, I, you know, in the last six months, I've gotten to speak with Matthew Vaughn and Zack Snyder, who are like two of my favorite directors. So, and while some people might tell me I need to get better taste, I am perfectly content with the directors whose films I enjoy watching. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with enjoying what you enjoy, Maggie. Yeah, technically, and while I didn't interview him, I also talked to Chad Stileski in the last six months as well. I talked to him back in February at an event we were both at. So it's three directors who I really enjoy their movies. I like action films, okay, guys? Like, yeah, I like fine. dumb action. You can like, like what you like. I like, like, the extraction movies like we've talked about before. I like, oh, that's what, Sam Hargraves, and then... Yeah. Like, David Leach's films. I loved Bullet Train. I'm really excited for Fall Guy. Like, there's a whole yes, even su Sucker Punch all in the game. <laughs> even Sucker Punch, which has an insane cast. Like, it looking back at that cast, it's just like, how how are all of these people in this? Sucker Punch is fun to watch if you just turn off your brain and just enjoy the visuals. Yeah, because which it is, is like, visually like, very. Exciting. Most of the things that I enjoy when I don't have to be like critically analyzing them are just the kind of things turn off your brain. I think that people should just be more, ex more accepting of that in general, when it comes to movies, like movies yeah. are meant to be entertaining. Not everything needs to be like, <laughs> yes, I ought. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, like, look, I know some people who love auto filmmakers and that's yeah. fine. Can't be me. <laughs> Give me the guys that are like, I have unlimited cash and I'm going to waste it all on the craziest action you've ever seen. Will it be good? Maybe not. But will everybody have fun? Yes. <laughs> you can, but you can also like both. You can be, a, you can be someone who's a big fan of art tour filmmaking and you oh, can absolutely. Also like your popcorn trash, you know, no brain action movies. Yeah, like, that's yeah. okay. It's perfectly fine. Just like what you like. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, if you wanna if you wanna check out any of Maggie's interviews that she has coming down the pipeline or anything else that we have available, head on over to collider.com, learn you up some stuff, stay informed about all your favorite entertainment properties. Uh, and you know, read some articles, watch some videos, have a good time over there, you know, listen to some people's opinions, form form some of your own opinions, and then come into the chat and let us know what they are. 
And we have some fun opinions coming tomorrow in our pre-recorded episode of Collider Dailies, which I think a lot of you will enjoy. Which we're uh, going to go record right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tune in uh, tomorrow as we talk about some fun, fun things. Yeah. So, so yes, tomorrow's episode will not be live live. However, I will be in the chat during the, the airing of the show. So feel free to continue to share your thoughts during it tomorrow. And I will be in there to uh, make fun of you or agree with you, you know, depending on which way it goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but with that, that's where we're going to end today's episode. So I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and uh, we'll see you next time.